Ladies and gentlemen from Hard Rock Live at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood, our next bout of the evening is brought to you by BYB Extreme and Karma Coin. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds of professional bare-knuckle boxing in the super middleweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Richard Green, Manuel Marquez Jr. and Vincente Rodriguez. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. She weighed in at 169 pounds. Tonight, making her bare knuckle debut from Omaha, Nebraska, here is Josette, number one head buster. Her opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim. She weighed in at 169 pounds. Also making her bare knuckle debut from Costa Mesa, California, here is Aaron Tohill. <laughs> Referee Wayne Spinola with the instructions. Aaron Towell, Joe Zet Cotton, fight scheduled for five, two minute. Rounds. Look how relaxed Cotton is with hand, both hands down, right? Comes in shooting that one, too. Omaha, Nebraska zone. Matt Delanoy still ahead. In our main event of the evening. Man, they're going at it early. Josette's really good at slipping punches, Mike. And what she does is she does that little pivot. And that pivot really helps her to then, then get a good base for her punches. Yeah, and she's very relaxed. Toil, on the other hand, looking to be aggressive, but a little, a little bit tight, a little bit tense, and is not able to get the shots off. And he gets off a good right hand there. Probably her best shot of the fight so far, but it's been Josette who's yep. been able to get off the more smooth shots so far. The one thing Josette said when we asked her about Aaron, what, what's the key? She said, I got a slipper jab. Got a slipper jab. She's got Tohill. Uh, that was a good left that connected. Tohill finally walking through some shots, but Tohill's got to get more confident in that jab. I mean, Josette's saying I got a slipper jab, but it's been it's been Josette who's been more active with the jab. Right. And look at the way she's going to work shots. that body. Yep. Now, both women have competed in MMA. So that utilization of the clinch in which we are educating Paulie on as we continue throughout the evening, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, That education is useful. You could educate especially, us on especially, that. Especially after that last uh, fight. And see Tohill, some blood there on the, on the left cheek now. Two-minute rounds here in our women's bout. This special attraction, then our women's title fight will be seven and so many rounds. And somebody's got a faint, is it again, like I said, like I say this all the time, somebody's got a faint in those dead spots or, or shoot jabs in those dead spots. Jose looked very comfortable in that first round. I, easily, yeah. I think, uh, she won that round. She looks like she didn't expand any energy at all. She looked like she knew exactly what she was doing. Great job of pivoting, moving from yeah. side to side. And on the other hand, Toyo looked a little bit hesitant because of that, you know, because of the fact that Josette was so relaxed and able to shoot such quick shots to surprise her. I mean, there were moments where Toyo was right in that range, and you know, with with Josette with her arms hands down, and, and, and Toyo still was hesitant to do anything. He was worried about the counter, worried about the speed. I, mean, I think those body shots really slowed her down. Uh, you know, Josette has made a very concerted effort to attack that body, and that's what she's been doing. I think that slowed down Toyo.
Aaron Toehill, Josette Cotton, round two. Good start for the very relaxed number one head buster. Aaron Toehill began kickboxing at age 18 under Sean McCauley at LA Boxing in Huntington Beach. Still training out in the Costa Mesa area now with Team Body Shot. Aaron Toehill is trained with some of the best around, Jason Perillo, many others. Toehill is a little bit hesitant. She can't find her range, and she needs to faint right here. Here's what she needs to faint. She's trying to move her head, pawing with that lead jab because she's, she doesn't want to step in, in, in with it. She's hesitant of a counter from, from Josette. See, so right away she gets defensive as soon as there's even a faint from Josette. And it's got to be Toehill who, who faints right here. It's got to be Toehill. Now Josette is turning southpaw. It's, it's got to be, it's, it's got to be a little bit more relaxed here from Toehill. She's got to be able to faint her way and set up a trap for, for Josette's low, low guard. Right now, look, Josette's not worried. She sees everything. And it's like she's daring him to, to get in that kill zone. Get yes. in that kill zone and let's see what you got, because that's where the, yep. Josette knows she can do the most damage. She's hesitant. She's hesitant, she, and it's making her tight, and it's only giving Josette more confidence because she sees everything. And there's a good right hand. And there's a couple of good right hands. Finally, she got going. And that's what she needed. Let's see if that turns the fight around for her a little bit. Toriel spent many years training at Extreme Couture in Las Vegas. Cotton, a true Omaha, Nebraska product. And now she's got to close that gap again. Back to square one. See if she's able to do it. Oh, a big overhand right. That got her attention. Oh, she opened up her jaw with that shot. Two minute round, so we're in the final seconds of number two. Credit to Oil for fighting back there, but again, was that Robinson? She's got the Lomitoma starting in the middle of the forehead, too. You gotta get some ice on that. Yeah. I thought what was working for Toehill was she, you know, she she made Josette aware of that jab, but then she started coming in with that lead right, and that lead right got in there. Yeah, but again, she's got to just close the gap just enough. She's she's not able to close the gap enough. She's, she's not able to get it off enough to be effective. You know, she got off a couple of good ones right. in that round, but it's not nothing consistent because she's still hesitant to step into that punch zone because Josette has so relaxed and she shoots so quickly with the trigger because she's so relaxed. Toehill, on the other hand, is the opposite. She's too tight, so she can't pull the trigger in time. It's a combination punch by Khan here in the southpaw stance. And you see she's closing the gap, she's closing the gap, and they're right there. Look, combination shots. Credit to Toehill for trying to punch back at the bell, but nice combination to punctuate the round for Josette Cotton. There's a lot of hype if you're Aaron Toehill. And Josette Cotton said, I am here to rebuild myself and let the world know who I am as a fighter. Round three. Yeah, even, even, even a level change with the, as a feint can work here for Tohu. Nothing. Oh, and that's why she's hesitant. You see that counter right hand by, by Cotton. Josette Cotton there with a counter right hand over the top of the jab, and that's why Tohu is hesitant to step in with that jab. And it just keeps coming up short with it. Benny, your scorecard after two rounds. Well, I, I like the, I like the job that Josette's doing. I think it's more effective, and I think that uh, it's kind of like the way I try to differentiate which punch would you like to get, get hit with, or not get hit with in this case. And I thought Josette's landing those heavier shots. But what I really like about what she's doing, and, and you, you watch Tohill, all her punches are coming from one angle, and one angle only. So that gets easy to defend against that, and then she goes underneath and goes to that body. Paulie? Yeah, I mean, uh, same thing with me. I think Jean Jose Cotton is in control of the fight. Toho's hanging tough. She's trying, but she's overthinking. She's, you can see it in her face. She's a bit befuddled and confused by the fact that she can't get anything consistent going. And when she even tries too hard, she actually gets walked into some traps and good shots. Her last fight was one year, nine months ago for Aaron Tohill. Josette Cotton made her professional boxing debut March of 2020 in Albuquerque, a majority draw with Jordan Garcia. See, Toe Hill is exclusively looking for the head. Yeah. She's not looking for the body yeah. at all. She hasn't seen her bend her knee. I'd love to see her use more of her waist, yeah. and, waist and, movement. And Benny, you made a great point with the bending of the knee, because I think it could be used as a feint as well. You change levels, you just get Joseph Cotton biting on something. 
the same idea every time. From that southpaw stance, now orthodox, effective both ways. She didn't hear the bell, but she got her bell rung with that job. Yeah, I mean, she actually, she, 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 bell, she, she actually did hear a bell too soon there. <laughs> she that was weird. Toyo made a mistake not attacking her there. BYB 7 comes your way Friday, September 10th. Our main event will be the finals of our 185-pound tournament. The semifinal matchup still to come. Jomi Escoboza, Sergio Mello are next, and then in our main event of the evening, Renee White Boy Rodriguez facing off with Matt MFD Delanoit. Social media, join us now. Like, subscribe, YouTube, watch all the old fights. Tell us what you're thinking on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and We'll, we'll talk to Paulie about the clinch. If you guys want to send some Muay Thai pictures or something, you, <laughs> is, that, is that Paulie? Transition. How do we transition <laughs> and, uh, and prevent guys from just taking a knee to escape that clinch? Right. And I'm only saying that to Paulie, be Benny, because I, I think he won't punch me. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be. But, I'm, but it's got to. You can't punish the guys who are, in, yeah. who are given the clinch. You know, that I'm actually trying to protect the guys who are doing the clinch. You know, which boxers wouldn't be doing it. You know, because I feel like if guys are just taking knees, then they're, you know, they're they're getting a free escape if they're not punished for taking a knee. Yep. All right. Let's let's talk about this one. We're in the fourth round now. It's been all cotton. Polly, if you're Aaron Towhill's trainer, you're in her corner. What did you tell her to do? Um, you need to close that gap, and I get to give her a couple of ideas to close that gap. Feints, number one. Jab off the feint, number two. Step in with the with the jab, and I know you're hesitant, so therefore feint first, then step in with the jab, you know? You gotta add the mixture of the two. She's trying, she's having trouble figuring out how to close that last step. That last six to eight inches where she'd be in range to land a more consistent right hand after the jab. Because she's hesitant, why? Because Jose Cotton's speed is countering her with shots she doesn't see coming. This, there's a speed right there on cue, Benny. And there is. She's short again. She, she comes right. short. She yeah. has to hold that gap. She can't. But see, see all the different angles Josette offers her? Yep. And that's the thing. And, 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 you know, the tough thing about uh, boxing, when you get an unorthodox person, you're not used to defending punches from those angles. And that's what Josette's doing. And Benny also made a great point last round. She's looking for the same thing constantly. She's right. looking for that. Just try to touch with the jab and maybe try to hope that Josette gives her the range for the right hand because she's not finding the range for the right hand. Josette, the time she got hit with the right hand, gave her the right hand, uh, the range on that right hand. So she's not even thinking outside the box right now. And Josette switches her stance seamlessly. Seamlessly. And there, she's either faint now. She's so relaxed. She, she got her toe biting on faint. And of course, this all looks seamlessly. The transition to anything looks seamless when it's this easy. When right. somebody's not forcing you to think, you can kind of, she's having a good time in there. Sure. And, and, and if, 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 if you've got the timing set down pat, and you've got the timing of your opponent down pat, it's fun for you. Look at her face, though, unscathed. There's not a single mark on her face. Oh, not the same in the other corner. There's a blood bank there. Benny, you've been around this boxing world for a very long time, and I am not calling you old. I'm just saying your experience, <laughs> my friend. We're seeing boxers switch their stance. We, we see it in MMA. We, now boxers are doing it more often. Doesn't look like Aaron will continue. Potentially, they're checking on it right now. The doctor's there. I thought they stopped uh, it. Nope, they're nope. going to go. But yeah. I want to ask you about that. Yeah. Because old school, you didn't see that, right? Exactly. And uh, I think that, what, what, especially in bare knuckle fighting, the thing that you have to, and you know, Paulie realized that when he fought, is that you have to get there first, any which way you can. And you have to change the angle. The guys who can attack the body, the boxers that can attack the body, do very, very well. Right. If you're exclusively looking for the head, not as well. And Chavez Sr. Yeah. was the man who did it. He would step in. Wasn't a full switch, right, Paulie? But he would step in. But man, that dude attacked the body. Yeah, you have to have your little 
your little angle switches, your your little tricks, your your little deceptions to close that gap. And and, and right now that's been Toho's biggest problem. And Chavez was so good at creating angles, especially inside. He could move that his his shoulder, his hips, and did it very good. I mean, just smoothly. And a nice hook there was landed a second ago by Toho. But again, it's. Aaron's all defensive here. Yeah, she's she's, she's, beat she, up. she's trying to just step in. That's the first body shot she's thrown, Taryn Aaron. Josette Cotton looks so relaxed. And because if, now Aaron's trying to get there, then punch. You gotta punch your way in. You gotta use the punches to punch your way in. You gotta you let that jab get you in there. You can't get there and then try to punch. Now she's got a cut open on Josette's right below is her right eye. But there's 40 seconds left in this fight, and the only way Aaron Tohill is going to get her arm raised is to knock Josette Cotton out. And you know what? Credit to Tohill for trying to go for it this round. You know, credit to her for trying to punch for that knockout. She's actually making Josette a little bit more uncomfortable now, although now the pace is slowing down enough. on both sides there. Yep. 10 seconds from the distance in this special attraction. They're gonna fight to the finish. Sometimes try the fights in the Trigon do go to distance. Yes, yes. But you know, Polly, if Aaron Doyle would have fought from the very beginning, like yep. she fought that last round, she could have won this fight. Yeah, she would have made Jose Cotton a bit more uncomfortable, and you would have had to force Jose Cotton to show character and not just talent. Not, not saying Jose Cotton doesn't have the character to stay in a tough fight, but we would have found out a little bit. Right now, we didn't find that out because she was comfortable for most of the fight, and so Joe Toho didn't get her to that point. Obviously, on ability, Jose Cotton was the more talented one. Yes. We, we wanted to see Toho could get her to try to reach in for that character. So in this super middleweight special attraction, Toho and Cotton go the distance. Our official decision is coming up next. Referees rendering, or pardon me, judges rendering their decision. Aaron Tohill, Josette Cotton, both making their bare knuckle professional debuts here tonight. They go the five round distance. Ladies and gentlemen, before the decision, let's have a great round of applause for both fighters, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Hard Rock Live at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida, after five rounds of bare knuckle boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Richard Green Jr. scores the bout 49-46 for Cotton. <laughs> Judge Manuel Marquez Jr. scores about 48-47 for Toehill. And Judge Vincente Rodriguez scores about 49-46 for the winner by split decision. Joseph, number one. Hey. Buster 